Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we'll be doing a 12 team PPR mock draft from the sixth overall spot using Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. The roster positions for today's mock are one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, two flex spots, a kicker defense, and five bench spots. We are going to be drafting up against the ESPN ADP as well as the sleeper ADP. But before we could get on into this 12-team PPR mock draft from the sixth overall spot, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you're doing up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into this 12-team PPR mock draft from the sixth overall spot using Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. The sixth overall spot this year typically leaves you with a question once you get into the draft and even before the draft. A majority of the time at the sixth overall pick, you are going to be able to decide between Brees Hall, Amon Ross St. Brown, Justin Jefferson, and Bijan Robinson. Now, sometimes one or two of those players are not going to be there, but entering into your draft, you should have a pretty good idea of which one of those players you want to select. The draft begins here with Christian McCaffrey, followed by CeeDee Lamb, Brees Hall, Tyreek Hill, and Jamar Chase. So Brees Hall, obviously gone, but Amon Ross St. Brown, Justin Jefferson, and B. John Robinson are all still available. Now this year in fantasy football drafts, there are a lot more wide receivers being drafted early on in fantasy football drafts, which means that in the third, the fourth round, there are a lot more running backs that I feel confident in, which has not been the case over prior seasons. So at the 1.06, for me, the pick is going to be Amon Ra St. Brown in a full PPR league. This guy is could lead the NFL in terms of targets and receptions. The Detroit Lions are a team that while they have Jameer Gibbs as well as David Montgomery, they want to throw the ball at a top five clip in the NFL. I understand there has been a lot of hype about Jamison Williams and they do have an incredibly talented tight end in Sam Laporta, but Amon Ra St. Brown is the answer all game long for the Lions. They could be up by 20, down by 20. It could be First and 30, it could be second and one. It doesn't fucking matter. The ball is going to Amon Ross St. Brown. This is a guy that was one of the most consistent wide receivers in fantasy football last year, and he played a majority of the season with a very serious injury. His oblique was torn off the bone. So Amon Ross St. Brown put up crazy numbers last year with an injury entering into the season fully healthy. I think you can consider Amon Ross St. Brown as the number four overall pick. To me, Caffrey, Lamb, Tyreek, those should be the top three in any order. But after that, I am very comfortable selecting Amon Ross St. Brown. So at the 106, we are going to take ARSB. This guy has been dominant 50 Shades of Grey style ever since the end of the season a couple of years ago where he was this hot waiver wire pickup. Once he was the hot waiver wire pickup, ever since then, the guy has been downright amazing. After Amon Ross, St. Brown, Justin Jefferson, Bijan Robinson, A.J. Brown, Saquon Barkley, Jameer Gibbs, Puka Nakua, Garrett Wilson, Jonathan Taylor, Kyron Williams, Marvin Harrison, Derrick Henry, and Devontae Adams. So a very normal start to the draft. Four running backs in the first round is going to probably be the normal, but there are going to be drafts where five running backs go in the first round, like in this draft with McCaffrey, Brees Hall, Bijan, Saquon Barkley, and Jameer Gibbs. You are going to be in drafts, though, where there are people that are so used to drafting running backs early that there's a chance that maybe six go in the first round, but I would say in most leagues, maximum five or six running backs going in the first round. Like I said, in the second round, Garrett Wilson, Jonathan Taylor, Kyron Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., Derrick Henry, and Devontae Adams. So we got our wide receiver one in Amon Ross St. Brown. So now we have a decision to make. Do we want to stay 
with the wide receiver position, or do we want to go with a running back here? For me, I am going to stay with the wide receiver position. Now, you could obviously go Sam Laporta or go Josh Allen, whichever quarterback you like. But to me, this season, I don't think in a majority of leagues, if you want one of those guys, you have to pull the trigger until the third round. So I am not going to go ahead and take one of them at this pick. I like ETN. I love Pacheco, love A-Chain. I like a lot of running backs. But I feel as though by the time the draft comes around in the third round, there will still be some running backs that I like. So I am fine waiting at the running back position. And I will go wide receiver. Now I'm going to tell you right now, I think the safest pick here at the 207 would be Brandon Ayuk. But to some, that would be a little bit of a reach. I think both Chris Olave and Drake London have very big upside but they also are both a little bit risky. Drake London, I understand, wasn't the best pick last season, but I do believe with Kirk Cousins, with a new head coach, a new offensive coordinator, with guys that actually have their head not directly shoved up their ass like a rice -roni jabroni I think that Drake London is going to be able to excel in this offense. I think the fact that the quarterback play is going to be significantly better moves me closer to liking Drake London. I understand that there is definitely risk that comes with Drake London because we've never truly seen him have a huge season at the NFL level, but I believe the guy has the pedigree, the skill set to do so. So Drizzy Drake London will be my pick at the 207. After Drake London, Isaiah Pacheco, Chris Olave, Travis Etienne, Josh Allen, Travis Kelsey, Devon A. Chain, Michael Pittman, Joe Mixon, Sam Laporta, and Patrick Mahomes. So there have been two quarterbacks and two tight ends taken after we picked at the 207. A lot of the running backs that I wanted, and really any running back that I would be ecstatic to draft in the third round, is gone. Now, I am a huge fan of Josh Jacobs, and I think that Josh Jacobs is going to shut up a lot of the haters, there are so many people talking about how Josh Jacobs is going to struggle in this offense because he's not going to be getting as many carries as he did in Viva Las Vegas, or they think he's just washed based upon what we saw last season. If you guys have been watching a lot of videos on my channel, you know that I give the Gawk Gawk 9000 special to Josh Jacobs all the time. I really believe he is still one of the best running backs in the NFL. And while I do understand that his workload is going to be lessened, I think the fact that the Green Bay Packers are going to be karate kicking defenses all game long, that Josh Jacobs is going to have a lot of opportunities to score touchdowns. I like Josh Jacobs here. If we don't go with Josh Jacobs, though, it would be either Brandon Ayuk, Jalen Waddell, Mike Evans, Nico Collins, and DJ Moore. Brandon Ayuk, to me, in the third round as my third wide receiver, he adds a little bit of balance to this roster, right? We have Monra St. Brown, who I view as as safe as it gets, right? Basically, like, wrapping that condom, wrapping the bubble wrap around my squad, right? I believe that Amon Ross St. Brown is incredibly safe. Drake London, a little bit more risky, but I personally believe that a lot of people are just kind of nervous for no reason. Brandon Ayuk is incredibly safe. He was one of the most efficient wide receivers in the National Football League last season, and he played well in an offense where Brock Purdy was coming off of a very serious injury that he suffered in the playoffs up against the Philadelphia Eagles. So now another year removed from that injury, I think Brock Purdy can be even better. I know there have been rumors about Brandon Ayuk potentially getting traded, but that basically seems like Bugazi at this point. I know Brandon Ayuk probably wants to get traded, but it doesn't seem like that's going to end up happening. And I'm very confident in Brandon Ayuk. I understand that when things swing back around, though, at running back, we are not going to like it as much, right? We have seen here that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 running backs are already off the board. The team's behind us. Three of them don't have a single running back, so the running backs are probably going to be a hot commodity by the time we pick again. So I think the smart decision here 
would be to draft Josh Jacobs. Now, if you want to draft James Cook or Rashad White ahead of him, go right ahead. I like both of those guys as well, but I have Josh Jacobs ranked the highest. And while I do think Brandon Ayuk might be the guy scoring more points than Josh Jacobs, or to be honest, I kind of just like starting my draft with a bunch of wide receivers when there's two flex spots, you can start four wide receivers all at once. With how many running backs have went, I don't really feel like a running back that I'm going to be super confident in or love drafting the fourth round, right? I'm a huge fan of Alvin Kamara. There are a lot of players that are at the running back position that I still like that are available, but it's not going to be very satisfying to take them in the fourth round where I could just take Josh Jacobs here and then get a wide receiver I feel pretty confident in in the fourth. So we're going to end up going with Josh Jacobs here. Again, I think a lot of people are severely severely overthinking Josh Jacobs this season. Now, I understand that he may potentially come back, but with how many running backs have already been taken and with the fact that three of these teams don't have a running back, I think that is the smart move. I am going to be incredibly overweight, like a big biggest loser contestant on the Packers offense this year. If I'm drafting 10 fantasy teams, on all 10 fantasy teams, I want at least one motherfucker that plays for the Green Bay Packers because I really believe they are going to be one of the best offenses in the NFL. And I think that Jordan Love is incredibly legit. And I think that, and I not, not just that I think, I know the team thinks that because they paid him a shit ton of money. After Josh Jacobs, Brandon Ayuk, James Cook, Nico Cousin, Let's Go Bowling Collins, Jalen Hurts, Mike Evans, Alvin Kamara, Stefan Diggs, Debo Samuel, DK Metcalf, DJ Moore, Lamar Jackson, Rashad White. I would be absolutely bricked up if I was able to get DJ Moore in the fourth round, but obviously he goes a couple of picks before us. According to Fantasy Pros, their top suggestion is to draft Trey McBride, and I'm definitely interested in Trey McBride at this pick. Looking at the running backs available, my intuition was correct, as Kenneth Walker is the only running back available here in the Third tier, I think Walker's in a similar tier as guys like Aaron Jones, Ramondre Stevenson. Kenneth Walker just doesn't really intrigue me this season. He kind of feels like a guy that you draft, and he's not really going to rinse you, right? He's not really going to give you a loogie. He's not going to tie your underwear to the flagpole and lift you up like a bully in some old school movie, right? Give you a swirly in the toilet. So I don't think he's going to be so dog shit that's like, wow. I shouldn't have drafted him in the fourth round, but I don't really see a lot of upside there, especially since I feel as though Zach Charbonnet might be better than him. So I'm going to stay away from Kenneth Walker here, and we are going to go wide receiver again. Trey McBride would be a fine pick. If this was a two wide receiver, one flex league, I think that would move the needle slightly more towards me taking Trey McBride. But if Jalen Waddle's available in the fourth round, I'm taking him every single time. Every single time. Jalen Waddle is a guy that has the upside to be a top 10 receiver in fantasy football. I understand that last year was a doozy for Jalen Waddle, but I truly believe that this season we are going to see Jalen Waddle a lot more involved in the offense. I think that the offense was so focused on feeding the rock to Tyreek Hill last year. They are still going to do so, but I think they're going to look a little bit more into Jalen Waddle spreading the ball out a lot more. The Dolphins offense on paper projects to be one of the best in the NFL. So getting a piece of the Dolphins offense in the fourth round, a guy that is, in my opinion, a guy that would be the number one receiver on a lot of teams in the NFL in the fourth round. I like that. Now, I understand some people in the comments Nick, Jalen Waddle's not going to be available a lot of the time in the fourth round. And you know what? I agree with you. I think this is a bit of an anomaly, but there are going to be people that fade guys like Jalen Waddle or fade who I would have picked Cooper Cup because they ended up getting burnt by them last season, whereas I am very confident in both Jalen Waddle and Cooper Cup. So Cooper Cup there, if you don't think that's realistic, again, most leagues, I don't think you're getting Jalen Waddle in the fourth round. I would have been perfectly fine with Cooper Cup as well. After Jalen Waddle, Marky Mark Andrews, Malik Neighbors, CJ Stroud, Cooper Cup, Kenneth Walker, Devontae Smith, Aaron Jones, Zay Flowers, James Conner, and Hank Dell. 
back up on the clock. Here are our rosters so far as Josh Jacobs, Amon Ross St. Brown, Drake London, and Jalen Waddell. Now, in a lot of drafts that we have done on this channel, Anthony Richardson has been a staple of those drafts, right? In the fifth round, if he falls to the sixth round, I'm getting bricked up underneath the desk here like I'm Bill Clinton getting some dome, right? Because I think that Anthony Richardson, while the bust potential, shout out Monica Lewinsky, is very large because of the injury risk and because we don't have a lot of sample size, but in the sample size when he was healthy, this dude was un. Believable. He was unreal. A Shane Steichen offense, a guy that had jo that uh, now has Jonathan Taylor with Anthony Richardson. But that's a guy that in the past has had Jalen Hurts putting defenses in the figure four while also having a very solid running back production in Philadelphia. Shout out to Rocky. So I think Anthony Richardson is going to have a huge season. But since we draft him so frequently in the fifth round, I try to diversify the guys I select because, again, I think diversification is important in fantasy football because even if I love Amon Ross St. Brown at the 1.06, I would sprinkle in Justin Jefferson, B. John Robinson, Brees Hall if I'm doing 10 different drafts because even if you love Amon Ross St. Brown, if Amon Ross St. Brown gets hurt and you drafted him 10 out of 10 times, losing your first round pick would Hurt like a butt cheek on a stick. So I think that Amon Ross St. Brown, again, while I like him, it's the same case for Richardson, right? I don't want Richardson on every team. While I do think he's very important to success, while I would be fine if I had 10 teams, if he was my quarterback on three of them, getting him in the fifth round. But I do believe you don't want to take the same guys every time. Plus, it would be fucking boring for me to come on here and just take the same guys in every single video, even though if we're a middle pick, we're probably taking Amon Ross St. Brown a lot of the time. So looking at the running back position, Ramondre Stevenson, David Montgomery, Zamir White, DeAndre Swift, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren. To me, I'm fine just hoping that the guys around me don't take a bunch of running backs, even though... I feel as though this team will because they don't have a single running back. The other teams, they may take some, they may not. So if I'm not able to get Zamir White in the sixth round, I guess it is what it is at this point. Because I want to go wide receiver. Trey McBride is still available. But if I'm being blatantly honest with you guys, I think it's more likely that you somehow get Jalen Waddell in the fourth round compared to getting Trey McBride in the fifth round. But Trey McBride does appear to be ranked around this range, so I guess it isn't as crazy. But I think I am going to go ahead and go... You know, we're going to have to pull the trigger on Trey McBride. If he was available in the fifth round, I would take him every single time. Again, if you want to do the, Nick, that's not realistic, just um, cycle him out for Dalton Kincaid. It seems like not a lot of people are all in on Trey McBride. I've seen a couple of TikToks, and if you're getting your fantasy football advice off of TikTok, uh, that's not the best idea. But what I will tell you is I've seen a lot of people be scared of Trey McBride. They bring up his points per game production with Kyler Murray, this, that, and the other thing. Well, guess what, buddy? Now they have Marvin Harrison Jr., who is going to be able to take away a lot of attention on defense. Trey McBride has the build of a guy that can score a million touchdowns. I think that with Kyler Murray fully healthy entering into the season, not coming off of a torn ACL as well as some other injuries. I believe a torn meniscus as well in 2023, but maybe that's off. I said it in yesterday's video, so I don't... Yesterday's video is correct. Whatever injury I said there was correct, but he definitely fucking tore his ACL and he came back a little bit sluggish, but I think he's going to be full mast paws in 2024, ready to dice up defenses. So. Trey McBride, I think there's a easy argument to make that he could end up as the tight end number one after Trey McBride, Dalton Kincaid, Calvin Ridley, David Montgomery, George Kittle, me Timbers, George Pickens, Anthony Richardson, Ramondre Stevenson, Kyle Pitts, Tee Higgins, Joe Shiesty, Evan Ingram, Amari Cooper, and now we are up to pick. To me, it starts to feel like a pretty, not a, not a staunch fall off, right? Where it's like uh, going from Zamir White to the next tier 
is not like falling off of a 10 story building where you're basically just fucked. I have no idea how you would live from that. It's it's more of like a it's like a two story drop off where maybe just your your leg gets a little bit messed up, right? Your leg gets bent sideways, Nick Chubb style. I love Nick Chubb. That wasn't really a joke meant to be shot at Nick Chubb, but it was just a you know, you can envision the injury, right? If I say Nick Chubb's leg, you're instantly thinking you get fucking PTSD from that night up against the Cleveland Browns, but I like Zamir White. Sue me. Sue me for liking Zamir White. A couple of years ago, if you had a guy like Zamir White who was really good for the last four games of the season, you know what would happen? Zamir White would be like a second round pick and there would be people fondling his his balls, right? Just dorking his Johnson, right? But to me, in the sixth round, there's a lot less risk. I already feel very confident in my roster. We have an elite tight end. We have... Three wide receivers that I really like a lot. And we have a running back that I think could be a top three running back. So I want to go ahead and go with Zamir White. Hopefully Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew play a little bit better than what we got out of the quarterback position last year with Jimmy Garoppolo, Aiden O'Connell playing in Viva Las Vegas. This is a team, though, that wants to run the rock. I've seen some very positive reports out of training camp that make it seem like, while a lot of people think Zamir White doesn't have crazy explosiveness or anything like that, that Zamir White has been really turning heads in training camp and is really going to surprise a lot of people. Do I love Zamir White in the sixth round? Would I prefer to draft him in the seventh round? 100%. But based upon the ADP here, where running backs are going a little bit higher, I'm fine taking that shot on Zamir White. I understand, again, he's not the most dominant, prolific pass-catching back, but I do think he has pass-catching upside. He bulked up a little bit in the offseason. He's looking huge, so I'm a big fan of Zamir White. If you wanted to go wide receiver there, though, I'm not really going to debate too much with you on that again because this is a two-flex league. So after Zamir White, DeAndre Swift, Keenan Allen, Chris Godwin, Najee Harris, Dak Prescott, Terry McLaurin, Jalen Warren, Rashi Rice, Tony Pollard, and DeAndre Hopkins. So, to many, this isn't really a true hero running back team because realistically, you'd like to hold out of the sixth round, go quarterback, or another wide receiver. But to me, it's kind of a modified hero running back build. And again, you don't need to enter into your draft, and you should not enter into your your draft thinking, I need to do one thing, like, hey, I need a running back in the third round. I need a running back in this round, that round, a receiver here, a tight end here. Because say you're like, okay, I want a quarterback in the third round. You get back here and Allen, Mahomes, Hurts are all gone. And Mahomes, right? A lot of the big quarterbacks are gone. I'm not just instantly screaming like, oh, I need to draft Lamar in the in the third round. I like Lamar, but I definitely think his ADP is more of the time in the fourth round, so I'm not really trying to reach on him. So again, don't put your fantasy football team in a box by thinking you have to do any given strategy. Again, if I drafted Bijan and things came back around and Saquon was sitting here, again, do I normally start out with two running backs? No. Am I willing to do it? Yes. So we are back up on the clock here, and I think we made the right decision by going running back here. I'm a huge fan of Raheem Mostert, but Zamir White is the locked and loaded running back one on the Raiders. Raheem Mostert is going to be the number two guy behind Devon Two Chains. So back up on the clock here. Kyler Murray is still available. Now, the quarterback position is one of the hardest things for me to discuss in fantasy football. And in terms of not just how you rank them, because it's very easy for me to rank them. Very easy for me to explain why I like a certain quarterback, why I dislike a certain quarterback. But it's hard to put into context of a mock draft, a fantasy draft, how the quarterback position is going to go. Because you are going to be in some leagues where there are a million quarterbacks going early. You're going to be in leagues where the fourth round hits and maybe... There's only been two quarterbacks off the board, and then there's this huge quarterback run. You're going to be uh, in leagues where maybe people are super cautious. They're kind of spread out. And then in the seventh round, you can get a Kyler Murray. But again, am I going to guarantee you in every single league you'll be able to get Kyler Murray in the seventh round? No, I'm not going to guarantee you that. But the needle mover here between Kyler and Christian Kirk, while I like both players is the stacking upside. 
I believe in Trey McBride. I believe in Joe Hendry. I think that if Trey McBride has a huge error, I'm not, I think, I fucking know that if Trey McBride goes in balls to the wall from the windows to the wall till the sweat drip down by balls, that you want to know who probably had a really good season? Kyler Murray, again, one year removed from the injury. Now with Marvin Harrison there, insane rushing upside for Kyler Murray. He could be the quarterback one. Now, is he a dark horse to do so? 100%. Because there's so many great quarterbacks going ahead of him, but you're getting him in the seventh round, the sixth round of a lot of leagues, and I definitely want to attack him in that range. After Kyler Murray, Raheem Mostert, Christian Kirk, Brock Bowers, Jonathan Brooks, Nick Chubb. Now, it seems like Nick Chubb is going to start the season off on the PUP, physically unable to participate. I understand we saw that video of him squatting seven gazillion pounds. Impressive. But I am one of the biggest nine-inch Nicholas Chubb fans. Ever since I started making fantasy football videos all those years ago, I have been giving him the Sukalamink special. I've been banging the drum for him for years. So if you go back, you watch those videos, you'll hear the auto fellatio that I give him. No ditty. But Nick Chubb is a guy that in the ninth round, okay, I get it. The 10th round, I get it. In the 7th round, I don't get it. Because they're serious. Like, that injury was serious. Very serious injury. I understand that I'm not a doctor, but very concerning, especially if he comes back. Say he comes back week 5. Just this, this is an example. Maybe he comes back week 1, right? But he's back week 5. Are they going to thrust him in there? Or are they going to ease him in? Probably going to ease him in. Probably going to ease him in. After Nick Chubb, Jaden Reed, Deontay Johnson, Jordan Love Me, Tender Love Me, Sweet, his wide receiver two, or maybe his wide receiver one, Christian Watson. We talked about him in yesterday's video. Javante Williams, Brian Robinson, and Brock Purdy. We're back up on the clock here, and it's basically a given that we go wide receiver at this pick because we still don't have our second flex spot filled out. So again, this is kind of... The, the downfall of going quarterback and tight end a little bit earlier. But again, you want to try out different things in mock drafts. That's why you do the mock draft. You try different things out. You could try drafting three running backs in a row, seeing how you like your team. You could try drafting four receivers in a row and then a quarterback, then a tight end, and then waiting on running back, right? You want to try different things out in these mock drafts. You try to experiment. So while I am more of a hero running back stand, while I do do that in a lot of the drafts, you got to try different things. Best receivers available, Hollywood, JSN, Jordan Addison. If Jordan Addison knew how to drive correctly, then he would be a no-brainer pick in the eighth round, but he doesn't, and he might get suspended for half the season. Hollywood Brown, I love the upside. I'm seeing a lot of hype for Xavier Worthy out of training camp, but Hollywood Brown is the veteran there. Rashi Rice, second year. That's another guy that might get the book thrown at him. JSN, second year in Seattle. I've seen a lot of talk up by the coaches on JSN. But we haven't drafted Hollywood Brown at all. I don't think in a single one of these mock drafts. And I do like his skill set. I liked him when he was in Carolina. Hollywood Brown has been in the NFL for a couple of years now. He's been in the NFL since 2019, which is crazy to say, right? I feel like Hollywood Brown is a young buck in the NFL. And of course, he's not ancient, right? He's 27, but it feels like he's a little bit younger at least just in my head maybe i'm i'm crazy hey guys would be like nick it's obvious that hollywood brown's been in the nfl for x amount of years sometimes you forget and it's like you remember watching this guy's tape coming into the nfl out of college and now he's on the fucking kansas city chiefs i do think that weekly he's a guy that could have some very down weeks kind of up and down because i do think patrick mahomes is kind of like Oprah, you get the ball, you get the ball, you all get the ball. He kind of just spreads the ball out evenly, but someone's always going to have that big game. I think the Chiefs offense is going to be a lot better than it was last season. And if Rashi Rice serves a serious suspension, I think Hollywood Brown is a great pick in the eighth round. Plus, he's a guy that we could cycle in and out with other wide receivers. After Hollywood Brown, Jordan, Addison, Ray, Caleb Williams, JSN, Xavier Worthy, Zach Moss, Cleveland Browns, Cortland Sutton, Roma Dunze, Austin Eckler, and the San Francisco 49ers defense so we have one two three four five bench spots left to fill and then our kicker and our defense since we drafted Kyler Uri early 
and Trey McBride early. We're not going to be drafting a quarterback or a tight end to chill on our bench. Next up here, we're going to go with Lad McConkey. We are looking for upside at the wide receiver position. Do I think more than likely that Joshua Palmer will be the wide receiver one? Yes. Do I understand that the LA Chargers are going to want to run the ball at an incredibly high clip? Yes. Do I understand that Lad McConkey isn't the biggest guy on earth? Yes, but I do think if he is put in the correct position and is able to get a decent amount of targets every single week, he could be a safe play with some upside because Justin Herbert is a very talented quarterback. In the ninth round, I'm fine doing it. When people are drafting him in like the sixth round in an underdog fantasy best ball draft, that's where I start to have question marks. After Ladd, Devin Singletary, Baltimore Ravens defense, Trey Benson, Dallas Cowboys, Brian Thomas Jr., Eon Coleman, back-to-back -back rookie wide receivers, Tajay Spears, Gus Edwards, Tyler Lockett, Ezekiel Elliott, Jamison Williams, and Blake Corum back up on the clock here, and I think it's time to get another running back. Chase Brown has seen so much hype out of training camp. It's basically like no one is talking about Zach Moss at all. I don't see anyone talking about Zach Moss in training camp. Everyone is just fawning over Chase Brown. They are talking about the upside. Now, do I think more than likely Zach Moss will be the running back one? Yes. But I also think that if Zach Moss was to get hurt, Chase Brown is now jolted into one of the better situations at the running back position because of how high octane, how many points the Cincinnati Bengals offense could score in any given week. What I will tell you right now is if you're looking for safety, right? Draft Jerome Ford, because I think Jerome Ford, at least for the first four weeks, is locked and loaded to be the lead back. And if Nick Chubb comes back and he's not the same Nick Chubb, then there's reason to believe that Jerome Ford could be the starting running back for potentially the whole season. Chase Brown is more of that lottery ticket play, right? That guy that while he has all the burst, all that, I'm just not sure if the team is going to put him in position to be the lead back on the team. That is why training camp is so important, why preseason is so important, because if we just start to read so many more reports, right, if there are a million more reports like, holy shit, Chase Brown's the guy, then I'm going to change my narrative here and go and draft Chase Brown a lot more. But Chase Brown's a guy that these reports keep coming in a week or two, he'll end up being like a, a seventh round pick, right? He'll His ADP will move heavily. So we'll go with the lottery ticket upside here in Chase Brown. If you wanted the safety, though, I'd be perfectly fine drafting Jerome Ford, F-150. After Chase Brown, Jerome Ford, Zach Charbonnet, Mike Williams, Pat Fryermuth, Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. And by Cortland Sutton, I mean Curtis Samuel. Apparently, I can't read, and I just saw CS and just read off Cortland Sutton for some reason. Antonio Gibson, David Ninjoku. He was born in the darkness. Chuba Hubbard, J.K. Dobbins. That actually made no sense. David Njoku doesn't look like Bane at all. He did look like Bane last year, though, after he ended up suffering that terrible injury with the fire. I'm so glad that David Njoku is okay. I have always been a fan of David Njoku. While I don't like him in fantasy this year, I'm a guy that, at the end of the day, I have a bright spot in my heart for my, man, my main man, David Njoku. I also have a huge bright spot for Jake Ferguson, who definitely should be drafted ahead of David Njoku, but wasn't. Jake Ferguson is one of the best steals at the tight end position, especially when people forget about him. So our team right now, we have one, two, three running backs, one, two, three, four, five wide receivers. But this is a league that is set up for you to draft a lot of wide receivers because you can play, be playing four wide receivers at all time and because it is a full PPR league. A couple of days ago, there was talk about how Rico Dowdle is potentially a cut candidate. Snip, snip, snip. Get him out of there. And then there was report from yesterday where Rico Dowdle is getting talked up heavily. He looks like the best running back on the team. He looks better than Zeke. So to me, that's kind of an actionable report. There have been reports about Tyler Algier how they want to get him very involved. I really think Bijan's the workhorse back, so I don't think that's as actionable as news. So here, let's see. Is it more likely we get Rico Dowdle in the 12th round, or should we just take him here? You might just get hit with the Rico Meek Millie is down here at pick 151 on the overall ranking, so I think he should be able to fall back to us in the next round, so we'll go wide receiver here, but we are going to deeply regret it if we're not going to be able to get him 
in the 12th round. Kobe Myers, Joshua Palmer, Josh Downs, Brandon Cooks, Rashid Shahid, Romeo Dobbs, Khalil Shakir, all available. I've waxed poetically about Jacoby Myers so many times. Do I really want to draft two players on the Raiders? No, but I'm going to make an exception because I just think Jacoby Myers is a fucking steal in the 11th round. Even with pretty subpar quarterback play last year, Jacoby Myers had a bunch of boom games. This is a guy that could be a very reliable flex number one option on your team. And again, that's the upside. He could even be a top 24 guy for a lot of the weeks. And he has a pretty safe floor as well. Again, I get the Raiders MO is going to be to run the ball, but I still think Jacoby Myers will have a lot of upside here. And there have been talks about Devontae Adams getting traded. Now, do I think that Devontae Adams will get traded before the start of the 2024 NFL season? No, but I do think there is a chance that we end up seeing Devontae Adams moved before the trade line, trade deadline. And that would make Jacoby Myers, if he was on your waiver wire, which he's not going to be a must pick up, he'd be the guy where you blow your wad of fab on him. Like he is, he would be in a really good situation. So after Jacoby Myers, Kendra Miller, who has just been getting roasted by Dennis Allen, head coach of the Saints, Rashid Shahid, Rico Dowdle, Tyler Algier, Romeo Dobbs, Jake Ferguson, the Jets, uh, Jalen Wright, Darnell, here comes the Mooney, Ty Chandler, Adam Thielen, and Marshawn Floyd. This Denver backfield is a team that I want pieces of, and I'm kind of just been avoiding Javante Williams and just taking Estime or McLaughlin in a bunch of drafts. It feels like there's been not as much talk of this backfield recently, whereas the backfield was like a huge talking point early on in the offseason process because of how Sean Payton was talking about how Javante is not really the true running back one. There's like debate on who's going to be the guy. So... I think Jaleel McLaughlin is very interesting. I think he could end up being the third down guy in Denver. And we saw him have some very positive games last season. I think he's better than Audric Estime, but we'll see as the summer goes along who the team ends up going with as the RB1 and the RB2. I think more than likely Javante will be the RB1, but based upon how he's played, even though he was a very hyped up prospect, I don't think he's a lock to be the starter for a majority of the season. After Jaleel McLaughlin, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, some reports about CH may be in the RB3 and Prince be in the RB2. Kamani Vidal, Pittsburgh Steelers, Khalil Herbert, Xavier Somebody, Tachamai Legat, Elijah Mitchell, and no one's ever mentioned that that joke is funny. You gotta admit, that's kind of funny. Uh, Roshan Johnson, Ray Davis, and there's definitely people that don't understand what I just said. Uh, Tua Tungavailoa and Damian Pierce. Joe Mixon, for some reason, just, uh, he just hasn't been practicing. That's uh, not good, but I haven't really been able to figure out why. Every report I've seen on Twitter is just that he hasn't been practicing, but doing some further research, whipping out the monocle Sherlock Holmes style, I have figured out that he's dealing with a hamstring injury, and we all know hamstring injuries are bad for running backs. If this persists for the next week or two, time to start being very nervous about Mixon, but as of right now, I'm not going to panic yet. Just yet, but there is going to be reason to panic shortly. We have one, two, three, four, five, six wide receivers, four running backs. This is kind of a luxury pick here. You can either go running back or wide receiver. We're going to hunt for the upside because, again, I, I'm not too sold on Hollywood Brown. So we're going to go ahead here and go. I've heard reports about how Wandale is going to be getting touches as the Running back on the Giants, they have been working on that in training camp. That could be very solid for fantasy, but do I really want to draft Daniel Jones's wide receiver too? Not really. I think Douglas probably has the best bet to be the number one guy in New England, but I've seen some positive reports about the rookies there as well. So let's draft Jalen Polk here. Jalen Polk famously said, unless it was Javon Baker who said it, but I think Jalen Polk said it, that He's so fucking good that he makes dudes in wheelchairs stand up to cheer for him. Respect for that quote. It's an amazing quote. And a lot of positive reports at a camp for him. Again, do you need to get blow up Violet Beauregard style in terms of hype for, for a guy because of training camp? No. 
But some news is actionable, like I said, some isn't. I think that might be some actionable news. Again, with these late round picks, you just want to be taking the shot on them, right? You're taking that high upside shot. If it doesn't end up paying off, right? If he ends up just sucking ass, guess what? You can cut him. So it ain't that worrisome, right? When you miss on like the round two pick, mayday, mayday. But when you miss on your pick at round 13, it ain't that big of a dealio. After Jalen Polk, Jared Goff, TJ Hawkinson, Dallas Goddard, Alexander Madison, Dalton Schultz, Tyrone Tracy, AJ Dillon, Justin Tucker, Cole Komet, Harrison Bucker, Khalil Shakir, and Brandon Aubrey. So now we are going to go ahead and get our kicker. We're not drafting Jason Sanders, even though Jason Sanders was a little bit better last year. I used to love Jason Sanders, but it feels like he's kind of regressed ever since the Flores era. So we're going to go with Tyler Bass Pro Shops kicker of the Buffalo Bills. Maybe the Bills start off the season not as effective due to the fact that they don't have Stefan Diggs anymore. Maybe the new look offense isn't as great and that benefits Tyler Bass. Then we see a bunch of kickers and defenses as well as Demario Douglas, Kenneth Gainwell, and Bucky Irving. The way you want to draft a defense is drafting a defense that is playing up against a not so hot offense in week one. The Jets all right, poor example of this. The Jets play up against the 49ers week one. The 49ers play up against the Jets. While they both have elite defenses, that scares me a little bit. The Vikings have a good matchup in week one up against the Giants, as do the Bears, who have the Titans week one, who have a brand new head coach, young quarterback. I think they could slow roll early on. I like the Bears defense a little bit better. I just think they're a better defense compared to the cold like Minnesota. Vikings, so we're going to go ahead and go with the Chicago Bears there, and the sucky thing is the fact that I drafted the Bears instead of the Dolphins or whatever will impact our grade negatively, but I don't give a damn, so our grade, 87 out of 100, in my mind, this is a 99 out of 100 team because nobody's perfect, shout out Hannah Montana, our team is Kyler Murray, Josh Jacobs, Amir White, Amon Ross St. Brown, Drizzy Drake, London, Trey McBride, Jalen Waddle, Hollywood Brown, our bench is Lad McConkey, Chase Brown, Jacoby Myers, Jalen Polk and Jaleel McLaughlin. Our kicker is Tyler Bass, and our defense is the Chicago Bears. Shout out William Perry. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you didn't have enjoying today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, whether you're new to the channel or not. Make sure you leave a like on today's video. Check out one of the videos on your screen if you haven't seen them already. And let me know down below in the comment section what you guys thought about the draft. Do you like the team? Do you hate the team? And what are some picks you would have done differently? Love you guys all. Hope you have a great one. And as always, good boy.